All right, it's Engine Eye here. We got the Daddy Dirt Bike Gary over on the phone. Got Mike, little dirt bike, and Road King here, and uh, we're set up. We set up our uh, our coil making machine, and Mike is going to show me how to make a coil. Yeah. Well, you made three or four of them already, Mike. Uh, of this type. Yeah, probably three of them so far. Yeah, yeah. and they've all worked good, so. What yeah. is it? What? This what, is the best setup yet. What is the procedure, and how many hours goes into this, Mike? Uh, well, we just ran the numbers, and at, at this speed right here of winding, it, you're looking at probably about five and a half to six hours of winding, of actual just wrapping the wire on the, well, this is the secondary, wrapping the secondary wire on the core. That does not count stopping in between each layer and putting the layer of insulating paper on and other prep work and stuff like that. You're looking at five and a half to six hours of just this, sitting right. here you know, winds and coils. So, so, so you imagine if you had paid somebody to do this, right? At minimum, $25 an hour, which is pretty cheap nowadays. It's yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, you can't do it. Yeah, I don't think I would uh, wind close for $25 an hour. Nah. It's pretty skilled uh, labor. Exactly. So, um, We're yeah. all set up here. We got the, our power supply here and, and our machine hooked up to the, the table. What are we running at about? Maybe two and a half, three volts. So. That's all it's uh, getting supplied to the motor right now. We've got a foot switch here, so I can start it and stop it. Yeah, it looks like maybe an old sewing machine or something. I don't know what that is, but uh, that's yeah. not variable. That's just on and off, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think if I could find a variable one, I think you'd like that better. That would be nice, yeah. Or even so. something with reverse, if you got to back it off a little bit. Right. That would be handy. Huh. I don't know if you could do, could you do that, Mike, with that uh, click around there? Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. You couldn't do yeah. it with that. Yeah, you'd have to have you, some You could kind of... to a certain point. Yeah, but... Yeah, it only clicks. It only moves in one direction, so. Yeah. Oh well, you don't. We don't have to go in reverse. Right. All right. So what Mike's going to do? We're going to going to cut this down, right? Yeah, I want to take the secondary off and make a note of how many layers there are, and we want to see what the primary wire looks like. Right. Primary winding. We, we pretty much know how many how many uh, turns it's going to take and how many wraps, right? Yeah, I, I think it's in the neighborhood of ten or twelve thousand turns total. Probably about 22 layers, and you know, around about 400 or so turns per layer, something along those lines. You know, we've done it a few times before, but it's not—it's not that critical. Right. You know, if you miss a layer or even two layers, or let's say you end up with 9,000 turns of wire instead of 10,000, mm -hmm. you, you, it's not like you're not going to have spark. Right. It'll be there, and it'll run in a hundred-year-old engine. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So it's—it's it's pretty forgiving. And so. the paper here just to keep track of your your windings and layers and stuff. Right. All right. Let's uh, let's start cutting it down. See what's uh, see what's going on. All right. All right. Mike is uh, he's dissecting this now. He just cut it open. Yeah. Uh, exactly what's going on, Mike? Can you see the layers? Well, it's it's kind of hard to see, but you can see them right there. Where? Right there. Right. Right there. Okay. Yep. So and that that's the primary right there. Hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. Look at that. All yep. right. So right. There, right there is what we gotta count. We wanna count. I'll, I'll peel the rest of these up here. We can count how many layers we got there. Hmm. Wow. Yep. Nice job cutting that. Thank you. I remember when Brian took his board, but I got unwound it instead of cut it open. <laughs> yeah. I kind of nicked the primary there a little bit. We'll paint that up. Yeah. How you just gotta put some. Uh, uh, Shellac. Yeah, exactly. It's just some varnish on that. It'll be fine. Okay. All right. I might just pull the whole water that off. And what are you doing now? Just trying to count them? Yeah, just trying to get a rough idea how many there are. Slide them apart a little bit. There. Now I can go along. Just get a rough count. Twenty-five. Twenty-five layers, yeah. Alright. Let me see that. I gotta answer the phone. If you did it enough times, or did it often enough, you would know how how many feet of wire you get per what per wrap. You know yeah. what I mean? Explain what's going on here, Mike. Can you show them? What, what is that? That's it's like wax, wax paper. It looks like wax paper. And you know, it smells like crayons. It does. It does. It smells just like crayons. You know? It's 
just it's like a wax paper, and that's exactly what I use when I do them. It's right. like k kitchen paper. Yeah, you know? that's just it's insulated in between layers yeah, in between for, layers. for what reason? Because uh, well, for uh, it's to keep out moisture for one thing. It's to it's to help seal the layers and keep out moisture, but it also insulates. It's a little extra layer of insulation from one layer to the to the next because the the voltage potential difference between like two adjacent wires is very little, mm -hmm. but from say this layer to the layer beneath it could be a couple hundred volts. You know? Right. So you don't want to you don't want that voltage to break the insulation down and short out because mm -hmm. if you had a short there or an arc path you would sh almost like shunt out one of the windings and you'd lose spark voltage. So yeah. it's it's an extra layer of insulation, and it keeps it neat and tidy too. It allows right. you to make, to make a nice wire, make a nice winding, layer it, make a nice winding, layer it, instead of having like a haphazard coil. Which I I I I've read about people just winding the wire on there haphazardly, and they say it works. Right. For how long they didn't say. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I this is the way they did it, so this mm -hmm. is the way I'm going to do it. Right. I mean. I guess we could, if you want to make a haphazard coil, we could try it. That'd no, no thanks, no, no. No, no thanks, no? Okay. You're not going to be the, 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 no. the guinea pig? Okay. Another thing here, you know, a lot of people are looking at this and they're thinking this is just bare wire, but actually it's not. That uh, that wire actually has an enamel coating on it. Yep. And, it, and it's pretty flexible. But uh, that's uh, yeah. also another little bit of insulation. Yes. Well, yeah, you ha it, would ha it needs to be enameled because right. otherwise you'd, you'd right. end you're up short with everything a, else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, you can see, if you look on the end, I think you were doing that, you can see, like, the nice shiny copper color there, yeah. you know, and it's got some kind of, yeah, enamel on it. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's clean this up and then uh, get down to the core, get down okay. to the primary. All right. All right. We run into a sort of a problem here that we can't continue with, but uh, we're going to have to address it. When Mike was taking this off, some of the, the lamination or some of the enamel was coming off of there, and he also seen some, a uh, little bit of corrosion under there, so... Yeah, yeah, you know, it's as I was taking a little bit of insulating paper off, you can see these bright copper areas. That the, the enamel was literally just flaking right off, and I could I could scratch it with my fingernail and just take it right off, which you shouldn't be able to do that. Mm -mm. Which is kind of concerning. It's not. It wouldn't be so, such a big deal like here. We could clean this up and go over it with some like uh, liquid electrical tape or something, just some insulating varnish. But what concerns me is if this looks like this the coil below it. If that insulation is compromised and we have a, a short between this outer layer and the one below it, then we're going to lose potentially one whole, you know, the, mm -hmm. the whole remaining, re remainder of the coil, which would be bad. That that would cut the primary in half because I think these are only one or, well, these are probably two or three layers. I think they're just two layers. I can't quite see. I can definitely see the layer below it mm. and I there may be one below that, but it doesn't look like it. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, just take the take the primary off as right. well. Like you say, it's only a and couple layers. Scratch. Yeah, and this you, is the easy one. This right. is the easy one to do. <laughs> and you have this at home though. I don't, I don't have. This I do. Wire. I do have that wire. Yeah, I bring that wire right. in. Usually, you guys, you wouldn't have to do this. I don't, I don't remember ever a time having to change a primary. I'm pretty sure I did it on the F. My F. The, oh, uh, your F. Yeah, the F right. coil. The okay. actual F. I did the primary. That's the wire you're gonna get. You're gonna get what's left over from that. Oh, okay. So that yeah. one, that one right there, the one you have now. If you're going to go through this much trouble, yeah, you might as well do, do the primary. So, yep, that's where we're at. So we're all ready. We had the wax paper and the, the friction tape, and we're ready to go. But uh, you know, there's got no, hung up. Got to yeah, hang up. No, no sense in going uh, any further. You know, when you got a problem like that. So if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. Exactly. Especially when you put that much time into it. Right? I'm going to be honest for six, seven hours. Yeah, at least. So, all right. What do you say we end it here, then, buddy? All right, pick it up later. All right, we'll pick it up uh, when we get uh, some uh, more wire there. What gauge is that, Mike? I think that's 20, hmm. 19 or 20 gauge wire. I don't remember off the top of my head. But it's it's a uh, it's a good thick wire. So. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's definitely not like the whatever yeah, 36 stuff. gauge or you know the stuff that you look at it and it snaps. Hmm. No, this is uh, easy to work with. All right, so we'll pick this up here, or maybe. Uh, if Mike can't get back here, I'll, I'll take a ride down to his house with this uh, operation. So, All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Mike. Oh, take it easy. Daddy wants to say goodbye. What about you, buddy? All right, I'll say goodbye. All right, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Another engine night. All right. See you later.